Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric and Chad. And Chad. Hi, I am alive. He is alive with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we've got another Top 5 Guns video for you. This is Top 5 Guns for the Modern Homesteader. Um, look, this idea has been you know floating around in our heads quite a bit, but I think that in general, if you look at the way that society's going and the way that people are just kind of... Um, you know, taking on a little bit of a different approach to their readiness in terms of uh, food supply and uh, being able to self-sustain, if you will. Uh, with that also comes the responsibility of protecting your property. And uh, the whole concept of being a homesteader uh, sort of implies that you try to be as much self-sufficient as possible. And part of that self-sufficiency is your ability to protect yourself. So we picked out uh, five guns that we feel uh, excel at that task, obviously. Um, and, and, you know, I think the whole homesteading community has not only been growing, Chad, but it's also uh, been expanding out to many different types of uh, mindsets and different communities. And uh, many people from many different backgrounds have been getting into homesteading. And it's real refreshing to see people kind of waking up to the old ways a little bit. Oh, yeah. In the past couple of years, there's been an explosion in the interest in, you know, having gardens, having animals, you know, livestock, things like that, having a way to generate your own power digging wells, you know, having your own water supply, basically all the, the bare essentials. I mean, we've kind of seen in the past couple of years that they're more important than ever. And I don't know if you've seen in the recent, um, the news cycle, uh, all these food plants that have caught on fire or had some other issue where, you know, production has had to be halted. And it seems a little too coincidental. I mean, the conspiracy theorists are out there, but it's a lot to go wrong all in one one fell swoop. And Bill Gates and the Chinese buying up farmland all across the country. I mean, something is going on, and we don't know the whole story just yet. But more than ever is a good time to think about homesteading. And um, as Eric mentioned, you know, these are just firearms to protect not only yourself, but also, you know, your investment and your property and your homestead itself. Because, I mean, if you can't protect what's yours, then, I mean, what are you doing? That's right. So many of the firearms that we've chosen um, fill a wide variety of different niches. Uh, they're going to be very familiar guns, uh, very familiar types of situations. So let's go ahead and break into the first one. Um, for number one, I chose this HM Defense uh, monoblock upper here. This is a 12 and a half inch gun. Now this particular one's on a machine gun lower, but you could build this on a pistol lower if you wanted and run a brace. Uh, Trijicon MRO on this this guy, real basic. Um, I actually don't have a sling on this one yet. Uh, which, what? Yeah, that's that's what? a big no go in my category. Uh, would be not having a sling, but uh, I grabbed this one as a spare uh, just to show you guys. I mean, you know, semi-auto. You know, you can run the M855A1, get you some decent ammo for this thing. Um, you know, light, handy package to walk around, check the property line, protect yourself, um, put a flashlight on this if you want, have a nice home defense rig, which is important. Um, remember, the concept of a homestead is sort of being, you know, independent of everything that's going on. So when you see people talk about in the survival community, oh, a bug out bag or a go bag, and that's cool. Yeah, you got to be able to have a, a ready bag that you can grab and go if you need to. Homesteading is more of a, you know what, we're going to mind our own business and kind of, you know, we're going to tend to the flock, so to speak. And and that's what homesteading is, is kind of the, the counter argument to that. Uh, if you have everything on your property to survive and be self-sufficient, well, then why leave? I think that's the general idea. So, mm -hmm. of course, having the ability to protect your home is very important. And uh, the AR is definitely an awesome option. A 12 and a half still gives you some good velocity. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, it gives lots you of, of power. So, like, you don't have a sling on this one, but, I mean, you could easily Mexican carry this one. It's short enough, right? Mm -hmm. Just uh, don't put a suppressor on it because you might burn yourself. That's right. All right. So, um, <laughs> like Eric mentioned, the, the 12 and a halfs give you plenty of plenty of power um, in a relatively small package, and you can easily zero this thing for a point blank uh, range, like 50 to 250 um, yards, and be able to do pretty much anything you would ever need to do. Um, we have shot this gun out to about 300 yards before with one of the Hux Works cans on board. And actually, I think we ran a Mark IV, a 4.5 to 14 on it at the time from Leupold. And the thing is dang accurate. I mean, having the, the mono block, like the gas block basically machined directly into the barrel, it reduces those barrel harmonics and gives you a little bit more kind of increased accuracy potential. And we really show that these systems really do work quite well from HM. Um, but the cool thing about an AR as well, as we've mentioned in previous videos, 
is how modular they are. And we'll get into a 22. I mean, because obviously every homestead has to have 22, right? But uh, CMMG makes these cool conversion kits. Okay. So this is basically just an insert that replaces your bolt carrier group. And it has, as you notice, like a little a chamber insert that's shaped like a 556 case, right? So it takes a special magazine right here, 22 specific, and you can convert any AR into a 22 caliber rifle just like that right so that just gives you a lot more uh room to work if you don't need to you know use a high power you know cartridge like 556 you can just drop your 22 conversion in there and you can run something like these uh remington these are subsonic uh hollow point copper plated projectiles and these are great for small game you know squirrels rabbits anything like that even if you just need to dispatch one of your livestock you know mm -hmm. or something like that because you want to eat so you can go out there get a rabbit whatever easy no agreed deal. uh one thing that i just want to mention about these remington subs which is kind of cool is that by being plated you don't have to worry quite so much about getting like lead build up in the gas system because that's always been like one concern that people might have with uh the drop-in bolts for the uh the ars is that you know that lead can kind of shave off and clog the gas system with a steady diet some people tend to to mention that of course a few rounds of full pressure will kind of help blow all oh, that yeah. out of there. But it is nice to have a plated projectile uh, make cleaning your suppressors a lot easier mm -hmm. and everything as well. So, um, you know, you, you prevent uh, the lead buildup in the suppressor as well. So I'm really looking forward to doing some more work uh, with this particular ammo mm -hmm. as well. Uh, Remington uh, was nice enough to send us some of this stuff to play around with. So uh, really cool stuff. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Every homesteader needs a shotgun. Now, this was sort of a difficult one to come up with because, you know, there's a few different schools of thought. One school of thought would be to stick with a pump action and keep it simple so nothing can go wrong. The other school of thought is, well, a semi-auto is nice because you want to have rapid follow-up shots in a potential protection uh, situation or something like that. Or maybe, um, you know, for whatever reason, you just want to be able to really throw some lead down so the Benelli M3 is a nice, uh, happy medium there, okay? Um, this is a convertible shotgun. We've done many videos on the M3s before. Um, Chad has an HK-marked M3 from back in the day. This is a modern M3, uh, but no matter what you go with, they're excellent. This one is a law enforcement model, so it can be converted to pump action or uh, back to a semi-auto. And this one has a collapsible stock mechanism to keep everything nice and short right there, which is kind of cool. And of course, you can't go wrong with the Benelli shotgun. Uh, these do represent a considerable expense. Um, M3s, M2s, M4s, anything in the Benelli line is not going to be a cheap shotgun, but if you're only going to own one shotgun, I think this would be an awesome one to have if you're only going to have one. Because mm. this covers a lot of different territory. Everything from less lethal, really light bird loads, Dragon's Breath for starting brush piles, which we've all done it. You know, you might have a giant pile of brush, throw a little bit of uh, <clears throat> accelerant on there and throw a Dragon's Breath round in there and you've got you a fire. <laughs> I don't know who would do that. I mean, we're just talking about like hypothetically, right? No one would ever do that. Um, it's, a, it's a load of fun to launch a round of Dragon's Breath into a giant pile of brush. It's a lot of fun. It is. Um, so like, <laughs> it, it literally is two shotguns in one. I mean... So you could have like a double barrel or a single shot, but having the M3 does give you a lot more capability. And um, even my old one, it's it's an early 90s. Um, like it's like Eric mentioned, it's an HK marked, but it's um, still a very viable gun. And Benelli has stopped making some of the older shotguns, but the M3 is still produced um, because it's such a viable option. Um, you know, we, we discussed like the Franchi Spas 12 and whatnot before, but it's more of a novelty item at this point. They're, they're cumbersome. They're heavy parts break on them quite often. They're more of a collector's thing, but the M3 is a serious tool. Yeah. 12 gauge shotguns, um, you know, come in a lot of different flavors and there's a lot of options out there. So don't think you have to buy a Benelli. Uh, there are some other options out there that are convertibles for a lot less money. Uh, I think TriStar makes uh just like a imported mm -hmm. Turkish M3 copy. Uh, I don't know how good they are, how well they hold up, but they do can, you know, they are considerably cheaper. Mm. Also, um, the cool thing about 12 gauge shotguns is just as a general purpose tool, uh, they can fulfill a ton of different, um, you know, potential jobs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, everything from protecting your house with buckshot or slugs. Uh, you can take a slug and shoot large game, uh, including bears. I mean, mm -hmm. you, so you can 
pretty much take down any animal on this continent with a shotgun, uh, with a proper slug, of course. Um, also, with the light bird loads, you can do everything from shoot limbs and harvest pecans. You can, you know, shoot, obviously, all the little random critters and birds and things. <laughs> so there's tons of things that shotguns can be used for, uh, and, that, and those descriptions just scratch the surface. Every homesteader must have a shotgun. A shotgun is the milk and bread of survival. You have to have one. So let's move on to number three. Why don't you uh, break out the little Ruger over there? The Ruger? What's left of it. What's left of it? <laughs> I mean, what's the only thing left on this thing? The receiver? The receiver. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> remind me of what this... This started out life as a Ruger Charger, correct? Yeah, so this is my uh, my Ruger Charger, and this one's got a whole bunch of stuff going on with it. The Enoch Industries Deep Six Chassis uh, with the Volkortsen 6-inch barrel. It's a carbon fiber wrap barrel. This one's wearing a uh, 640 Dual Fuel from Sur Surefire. We've got a Trijicon, uh, what is that little guy called again? The SRO. Mm. I always get all of their abbreviations mixed up. Um, and, of course, an SB Tactical Folding Brace. We've got the Magpul uh, K grip, which is their PDW grip, which is meant to be very, very small and compact and lightweight. And, yeah, this one's wearing a, a what is that, an AAC that's Element, an element two. 2. Yeah, I believe that's an Element 2 yep. on this particular gun. Yeah, it's a really cute little package. And, um this is something you can walk around with, shoot small game. Uh, 22s have their place, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, for a wide variety of different situations. Uh, this particular gun also has the amazing drop-in Volkorts and Trigger Pack. Uh, Scott and the crew over there, they do a gr great job. Also, Scott's uh, match-grade bolt, uh, which is an upgrade for sure. So his Trigger Pack bolt and barrel. Uh, mm -hmm. The barrel only comes out to like right there, so you can see where the suppressor starts. But that's called the Deep Six Chassis. So uh, Enoch, they do make a couple of different ones. Uh, I chose the Deep Six because I wanted to run a can on it. But if you just want to run the little guy loud, uh, they make ones a little bit shorter, I believe. So if you just want to run a shorter barrel, you can do that. Yeah, but, see, uh, it's a cool little setup. I like this. Probably setup. not the optic. I'm going to wind up keeping on there, mm -hmm. but I just threw that one on there. So I like this setup a lot. Um, but a few considerations that I would have would be I would prefer a little bit longer barrel on a 22 that I'm going to run sort of short and sweet like this. At least something that's about maybe an eight to ten inch, because then you get more like rifle like accuracy. Uh, the six inch, this is a match grade barrel, and but it still provides like match grade target pistol accuracy. So, I mean, you're talking maybe like 100 an, yards. Yeah, like an inch maybe at 50 yards or so, and maybe like inch and a half too at at uh, at 100. I mean, I've got it's a 100 yard swirl gun. It is. I mean, I've got a couple of rifles that um, you know are in integrally suppressed, and one of them's a four and a half inch that uh, KG made uh, produced for me back in the day, and the other is the Tico, which is like a 11 inch rifled barrel, um, and with the 11 inch rifle barrel, I mean, I'm easily MOA or better with match grade ammo, but with the four and a half, it's more like shooting a handgun with, with a stock and everything on it. It's not an SBR, but it, it provides that sort of, um, accuracy potential, but Heck yeah. it, these are really cool rigs. I mean, but a 22, like a dedicated 22 is exceptionally, um, uh, good to have. And if you want something a little more precision, you could go with a bolt gun, but I mean, fast follow-up shot, especially if you're, you know, shooting, moving targets like right. squirrels running around the tree or something like that you know fast follow-up shots come in real handy something to consider as well uh remember the the title of this video is top five guns for the modern homesteader so we are choosing a little bit more modern stuff uh that's in line with mm -hmm. a little bit more more modern taste but bear in mind look grandpa's old remington 552 will serve you quite well for years to come. So you don't have to have a modern suppressed 22 like what we just showed off. You can always run a, you know, look, pawn shops and secondhand stores. You can always go in and find a decent 22 for a few hundred bucks. You know, it might need springs. You might need to clean it well and just check for worn parts. But overall, as long as it's not been, you know, beat the heck and back, any decent little 22 you can pick up for a few hundred dollars is going to serve you. Uh, quite well and there is you know there's a lot of them out there um, there's a ton of used rimfire rifles on the market so don't think you have to buy something expensive find yourself an old 552 you can shoot shorts longs long rifles uh, we do have a video on that gun if you want to check it out if i was going to run an iron sided you know regular old classic 22 a 552 would be 
quite a hard gun to beat. I'm also a huge fan of the Marlin Model 25, arguably one of my favorite guns. Again, with the Model 25, you got to make sure it's the one that's got that uh, kind of funky looking little like banana shaped magazine that will feed short long or long rifle. So there are bolt guns and semis out there that you can feed a variety of different ammo through and actually have a little bit more useful of a setup than a 1022, which you're kind of limited to 22 long rifle on the 1022. However, there are options out there that will allow you to completely cannibalize any 22 ammo you can find. So just keep mm -hmm. that in mind. All right, so number which, number 4, which handgun? I mean, if you guys have been watching the channel for any time, even like a week, you ought to know what this handgun is going to be. I mean, I'll give you like maybe one guess. Go ahead. Guess. What do you think? A G-Lock. Yep. Right? Absolutely. So this is one of the uh, 45, so this is sort of like the, what, commercial version of the 19X, more or less. You know, right? I love this gun. And, and, and listen, I know that there are a ton of people out there that are going to say, that someone's a Glock fanboy or someone's an M&P or Smith & Wesson fanboy, at the end of the day, pick a pistol that works for you. Mm -hmm. This is a representative example. Every homesteader needs a handgun. All right, so don't think it has to be this one. This mm -hmm. is just an example. Um, I love m and I'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of them, and I love all of the amazing triggers uh, out there for the M&Ps, and I, I love the the clicker that goes in the M&P. I think it's a fantastic upgrade. Mm -hmm. Um you know, what's the company that makes those triggers again? I, Apex. Apex. Mm -hmm. Apex does a, a trigger package for the M and P that just it it blew my mind. It's when I day. installed it, it, yeah. it just it was the best thing ever. And and that's not necessarily a plug for Apex, but I am a fan of their work and they do amazing stuff. And they do triggers for Glocks as well. They do. Um, I haven't watched it yet, but uh, you know, Mike Grantham, he did like this ice test, I think, and I think the M and P fared quite well. Did it? Yeah, I'm not really sure about the Glock. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he tested a Glock. Oh but boy, I, I bet there's you know, some tears flowing from that. We I'll have uh, to we, go check that out. We work on YouTube, <laughs> but I don't really watch YouTube. I yeah. mean, so, um, but anyways, yeah, the the 45 is neat because it's a 19 top, so it's sort of the the compact size top with a full size frame. So it does accept the full size uh, 17 shot magazines. Uh, you can't run the mags for a 19 or a 26 in here, but you can run the 24s and the 33 round sticks just fine. Um, but you know, Glock, it, it's just such a simple design. Uh, there's a plethora of parts out there available, you know, replacement parts and such, and um, you know, they're just great guns. I mean, right out of the box. You know, yeah, very utilitarian. You know. So. I Glock is the Honda Civic of guns, <laughs> and that is not meant to be a stab at Glock. They make a fantastic gun that is a fantastic tool right out of the box. I mean, if I go to Home Depot and I want a staple gun, and I go and I look at all the different staple guns, and I pick up a Crown staple gun, right? I know I could put staples in that sucker, and it's going to work. And it, it's an industry standard for staple guns. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether we like it or not, Glock is the industry standard for polymer frame striker fire guns. Now, one would argue, and they'd be correct, that, of course, many, many brands are making amazing guns. I'm not saying that you shouldn't look at M&Ps, because you should. I love the M&P. Pick a gun you like and stick with it. Don't worry about what it is. But we chose Glock for its utilitarian, uh, out-of-the-box, ready-to-go, tough-as-nails um, aesthetic that they, they mm -hmm. tend to have. They're not going to win beauty contests, Okay. Uh, but you know what? It is a functional tool that will save your life, and every homesteader needs a pistol. So uh, this is 9mm. Uh, big shout-out also to our friends at We The People Holsters. Uh, just a quick plug for them. They do some amazing work. Um, I really love what these guys are doing, and they're all uh, American-owned and operated, made right here in the U.S. Uh, check them out. You can actually use our code, IV8888, and get yourself a discount mm -hmm. if you want to pick yourself up a holster from We The People. So just hey, want to uh, show that off. Can can we can we get a discount if we send our own, like, tanned hides to them, you know, from the cows that we slaughtered on our homestead to uh, eat? You know, I, mean, I don't you know, know if that's an option, but it should be. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> we like steak, right? Mm, all right. Um, all right, so, like... <laughs> all right, number five. Number five. Right. Now, th th this particular one, I'm not going to lie, Chad and I were a little bit at sorts on this decision. Um, I wasn't quite sure how we were going to run this. So every homesteader needs to have some type of a hunting rifle, right? You need to be able to take down deer and hogs and everything. But maybe, okay, instead of just a hunting rifle, why not something that can you know double 
uh, for potentially like maybe coyotes and other nocturnal animals, as oh. well as, uh, you know, any potential two-legged game that might cross your path. It'd be kind of nice to have a fast follow-up shot. Mm-hmm. I so like, I feel like Vanna White here. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. You got <laughs> so this is the... Here, you want to hold that thing? Yeah. So this is the, the DD... Uh, what is that? The... The DD- DD5 M- V4. V4. Mm-hmm. So this is um, your AR-10, more or less. It's just a modern AR-10 made by Daniel Defense. But uh, this one has an 18-inch uh, hammer forge barrel, I believe. Mm-hmm. And we have shot these guns out to some you know, crazy ranges and whatnot before some of the shoots we've been to. But uh, we've done a video on this thing. And it's set up right now with an Armasite Thermal. Um, recently, uh, I think... Your stepson was out doing a little bit of uh, hog hunting and such. This is the uh, Armasite Zeus Pro mm. that's on this particular uh, rifle. Now, this is an older Armasite Thermal. We are going to be getting some more modern ones out. Also, a side note, a lot of the meltdown footage that you've seen over the years where we run a thermal shot was recorded with either uh, the Zeus Pro or Chad's. Uh, Chad has another Zeus mm. that is... I it's don't the know, basic model. It's yeah. the basic model. So it was either his Zeus or this one that we used... Uh, to record all the meltdown footage, mm-hmm. just a little side note there. This rig is very capable and will take a wide variety of different animals, gives me fast follow-up shots, and then if I need to protect myself at longer range or have a little bit of standoff distance, this gives me a little bit more punch out of an AR than the 5.56. So it I think does. it scratches multiple itches there. It does, and we thought about like including a 308 bolt action or something along those lines, but really, like... An auto loader really covers both bases, especially something like the DD, because it is a highly accurate gun. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be quite as accurate as a dedicated bolt action that's set up real well. I mean, you can get down to like the quarter to half MOA range. These guns are capable of that sort of accuracy, like half, three quarter MOA, pretty much right out of the box. Ball ammo, we were seeing like one and a half MOA. Um, which, which is what com- more does it need to do? It's completely capable. And like Eric said, you know, you got fast follow up shots, it covers two bases with one rifle. Uh, I mean, it's just, when, when you're thinking about a homestead, you know, you want to try to keep things relatively simple because, um, you know, you're, you're busy with your time managing the homestead. I mean, you've got gardens, animals, all that stuff to tend to, plus your family as well. It's less um, equipment to have to keep up with it when is. one yep. rifle can do the <clears throat> job of many rifles. Less, less parts to have to keep on hand to keep things running. And that's one thing, too, to consider is, you know, we, we went with sort of standard designs that are, number one, extremely popular, and number two, very well supported throughout the industry, right? Because they've been around, the designs have been around for a number of years, correct? So you've got yeah. parts availability out there. Parts are easy to source. And, you know, in the event of a situation where, you know, you can't just go down to the corner store and just, you know, buy parts, you know, you can always barter and trade and whatnot with other homesteaders. I mean, that's always a consideration and a possibility. I considered putting the SCAR uh, 17 in this particular slot, but we chose not because of parts availability. Um, Even in a perfect world, when logistics are perfect, um, the SCAR is a very difficult gun to get parts for. Uh, Now, I'm lucky enough, you know, I was was able to source a few spare parts for my SCAR, just like I've got spare parts for the DD here. Uh, So that's fine. But always bear in mind that whatever piece of equipment you decide to use, that you do have to support it one way or the other. And uh, and that, you know, understand that parts uh, supply is a thing. Uh, what I love so much about the AR-10 and the AR-15 as, as gun designs is that most of the parts, now obviously on the DD there's some specialized components um, like the way that the buffer is built into the carrier and some little things like that that are a little bit different than your normal AR, mm-hmm. but all of those parts are available. You can call up DD and just order what you need, and the prices uh, are not bad, and of course the availability, they support their guns quite well, mm-hmm. so um, I kind of see that as a non-issue. All right. So every five guns video has a wild card, and this wild card's a doozy. All right, what? What? <laughs> okay, keep going, keep going. Yeah, keep look. going, keep going. Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's long and black. <laughs> no, look. Okay, Air Force air guns, mm. um, fifty cal Texan SS. All right, this is a wild card. Three hundred fifty grain Nielsen uh, slugs moving out of this thing. This particular air rifle is quiet. It's accurate, doesn't require any special paperwork because it's an air rifle. This thing can ship straight to your front door, and it is capable of taking large game, no problem. Mm-hmm. 
All right, so as long as you got some compressed air on hand, you can cast your own projectiles, get your own bullet mold if you want. Um, now, Chad has an interesting theory about why this one made it in the mix. I'm going to let him explain that. All right, so... <laughs> All right, if you think about having a homestead, I mean, you, you want to provide yourself with all the utilities that you need, right? Water, power, all right? So most homesteaders are going to have some sort of like solar array to provide power and be off the grid, right? So if you're off the grid and you say you've got maybe like an array of batteries or something like that just to provide power for, um, say, tools and equipment that need like a high startup amperage, like a high pressure air compressor, right? To fill these tanks. I mean, cause these are like 3000 PSI tanks on these guns. And with these larger calibers, you don't get as many shots per fill. I mean, cause they do require quite a bit of air. Um, but you could literally be hundred percent self-sufficient and not have to worry about expanding any of your powder supply or anything like that for the given task at hand. And with the projectiles being pure lead, all you have to do is just, you know, run your, um, your lead pot, Okay, and you've already got the power for it, and you just cast your own stuff. Or if you don't have the power, you know, you just start a fire and you just do it the old-fashioned way. And we we've done that before. You know, and if you don't get a hundred percent pass through, you can just take the projectile out of the other side of the hide and throw it back in the pot and yep. reuse it. Now, I mean, personally, I I I mean, I like the the Texans, I like the big bore stuff, but for most of what you would probably want to do, like a small game and such, uh, you could probably get by with like a twenty-two or a twenty-five or something. And number one. Use less like lead for your projectiles. Number two, use a lot less or well, more efficient on the air. So you fill one tank, you can get God hundred shots sometimes, if not more, depending on the size of the tank. Um, and it they would be quieter. I mean, these guns are quiet. That big old freaking tube on there. But man, a twenty two air rifle is like hella quiet. Air Force makes a gun called the Talon P. Yep, and it's uh, like this little bitty tiny compact. Uh, 25, they do them in 22, 25. They might have a 30 cal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, But they do them in a couple of different calibers. And those are nice because you can get kind of that 22 punch a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the Talon P's can be ordered in SS version, so an integral suppressed, which is cool, moderated. Mm -hmm. So air guns should not be overlooked for the potential homesteader. Mm. Personally, I prefer uh, prefer the big bore because I want to be able to shoot anything I want with it. Uh, but you can still shoot small game with a big bore air rifle. Don't think you can't because just because the projectile is large doesn't mean it just rips all the meat apart. It still punches a clean, tiny uh, a hole right on through. Now, well, it ain't going to be a tiny hole. It's going to be a <laughs> hole about the size of my finger. But the point is, though, you could eat all the way up to the hole mm-hmm. when it's an air rifle, which is kind of cool. It doesn't disrupt and cause all of this crazy wounding characteristic like a high-speed rifle bullet will. Um, so you're actually not wasting meat to shoot even a rabbit or some type of a fox squirrel, even with a big bore air gun. I mean, yeah, it's going to make a bigger hole, but as long as your shot placement's good, you can totally still consume that animal, no problem. So I, I personally would prefer having a gun like this that I know can take down anything I want rather than being maybe slightly limited to the Talon P and, and not being able to take quite as much of the larger game. The Talon P is a much better gun to walk around and hunt with because it's lighter to carry around, whereby this guy is definitely uh, the apex of what they make in terms of power, and that does come with a with a fair amount of heft. Mm-hmm. So uh, two different ways to skin a cat, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah, as far as parts go, just keep a few O-rings on hand. That's right. You know. That's right. So there's our top five guns for the modern homesteader. We hope you enjoyed this format. We're trying to change it up just a little bit. Uh, hopefully you can see the difference a bit. But let me know uh, if if you have some top five guns videos that you'd like for us to do. What are some of your ideas? Let us know down in the comment section below. And if we like your idea enough, we may just go ahead and do it. Um, Huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for supporting what we do. Uh, Big shout out to folks that purchase t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc. Uh, Those are ways you can directly support us if you wish to. Uh, Feel free to do that. And thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Are you a homesteader? Do you enjoy... Uh, the idea of being off the grid, being self-sufficient. What are the guns that you would choose? Uh, let us know your list down there. And you know what? We might take some of your lists and compile them and revisit this video maybe a year from now or whenever. So let me know those questions uh, in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. All right. And Chad's not gone. He's here. <laughs> Still here. I didn't leave yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've just been trying to take some of the work workload off. I mean, so with the news plugs, the reason I've been doing them is sometimes it's not always a gripe-worthy subject. Well, everything's gripe-worthy. But 
I want to try to get the information to you guys a little bit more, um, you know, compacted and a little shorter. I mean, right now we're sitting on a 30 minute video, which is which is fine. Not a big deal. I know some people like the long format stuff as well as the short format, but we're trying to change it up a little bit to make the information a little bit easier for the modern lady or gentleman to digest who is busy and got things going on. I mean, you don't want to hear us yap all day long, so I try to condense those videos, make them a little bit shorter, and still get you the news you want to hear, and hopefully that's working out for you all, so let me know. Many more on the way. Have a great week. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye.